Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Southern. We haven't seen you for a while. Uh, yes, good morning, Your Honor. I've been sending my, uh, my colleagues down recently. Yes, that's quite an impressive library you've got behind you there. It's a uh, tapestry, isn't that fun? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Staff, uh, Mr. Stafford, Ms. DeWitt, can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, good morning to you. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the courthouse. And you are here on a non-payment of rent case. The esteemed Kevin Sutherland is here on behalf of Quail Run Apartments. Um, and Meg Bauer is here from Legal Aid for advice if needed. Before we begin, I need to advise you of your rights as a tenant in a landlord-tenant proceeding. This is filed as a non-payment of rent case. In such a case, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have a right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, and if you are eligible for any emergency housing assistance, you do not need the judgment to get that assistance. The summons and complaint are sufficient, although there's some disagreement about that from the DHS. Anyway, if the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizens Mediation Services Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If both parties are agreeable to mediation, you can contact the court and we can help set that up. If you reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is centered by the court, you would waive the rights listed above but have the following additional rights. The judgment could not be enforced until three business days had passed. You could move to set aside the judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord-tenant hearing, but if the judge did not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. Mr. Sutherland, what's the arrearage here? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, rent to retain possession through the end of this month, October, reflecting the recent payment we did receive in October. We're looking for just a remaining portion of $409.29, plus the statutory court costs, which I show at $213.83. So we're looking for a total of $623.12 to bring this account current. Very good. Um, Mr. Stafford and Ms. DeWitt, do you agree with that? Um, well, the uh, the whole portion of it is uh, it's to be kind of frank, frank it's kind of a mess. Um, basically, on my ledger balance, uh, I was paid up to date aside from uh, basically a pet fee. Um, I have emotional support animals, and to my knowledge, you're not able to charge a tenant for anything for an emotional support animal. Um, at least to my knowledge, they become something other than a pet. So there can't be a pet fee. Um, so basically it started with $50, I think it was. Uh, and from there it went up, which would be the 407 uh, saying. Um, basically it started with the $50 and they added, there was a hundred dollar pet fee, another hundred dollar pet fee. Uh, and it's just kind of a whole big, kind of a slur of, uh, you know, just kind of pet fees and late fees just kind of added on one top of another. And then on top of that, I also have to, uh, and in my money because I'm no longer to play, pay. I'm no longer able to pay online uh, due to a, an NSF charge, a non sufficient fund charge, um, which was due to an unexpected bill coming out. And I did take care of that right away. Um, so basically, uh, that was all taken care of. Um, aside from that, the 407 came up from the uh, the pet fees and late fees that are acquiring from me sending the money through the mail which I do email John and I let them know I've been kept in touch. Well, they've got insurance, electric, an NSF check fee and some late charges. There is no mention in here of a pet fee, but uh, the uh, lease, what is your emotional support pet? Uh, I have a dog and a cat. It's actually for Emily. Um, it's uh, through her um, with her doctor. Your Honor. All right. Well, 
Yes. If I could just inquire whether or not a reasonable accommodation paperwork request has been submitted with the uh, uh, treating physician letter that states that the, you know, the typical two prong test that we have in Michigan is, you know, whether the pet is unnecessary for the use and enjoyment of the property. So the, the documentation may be uh, something that may be holding that up. I, I've, uh, sorry. So I would just ask the court to inquire if that's been submitted since this is uh, yes. the first I'm hearing of that. So that's, you can't just bring in a pot belly pig or say, this is my personal support animal. Yeah. You got a dog and a cat. There's some requirements. And mm -hmm. so have you submitted that? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, when uh, David was in charge, it was around June uh, before Jamie um, was in charge too after that. Uh, I submitted it to John and then we ended up getting a dog and I did submit that to Jamie and John as well. Um, David had one for just my cat. Um, and then we ended up getting the dog and we have submitted the form and I was totally open to them. I said, go ahead and call them. The number was on there. Uh, they required me to fill out a pet screening.com profile, which I was uh, honestly uncomfortable with. It was asking me to release all kinds of medical information and stuff that I didn't feel comfortable with me and me and Emily both. We decided it, shouldn't you just need the the documentation stating that you are you know able to have that and it's viable to live with you you know what i mean uh the i guess the esa paperwork you know the form you need to provide all right so you haven't filled that out and i can't tell what this 409 dollars and 29 cents is from and you're um, on me either, honestly. It's, it's a big mess. Uh, well, so it, I can make short was, work of that, Your Honor, if you'd like. All right. Yes. I, I don't know how much you want to get into today because I recognize that we'll probably come back for another hearing. So I just want to. Well, an accounting sheet would be helpful. Sure. Um, you're not too far behind. Um, and there's this issue about the emotional support animal, but you don't want like the rules. So you didn't fill it all out. Um, so. I would ask for an accounting of what this is. We will continue this to October 27th at 11 a.m. Yes, Ron, and we'll submit a letter to the court and if the defendants need a copy, we can provide that as well. That would be helpful, V. Stafford. Uh, Judge, I'm certainly available to speak with them if they have questions. All right. We'll or if they're, interested in they're going to submit an accounting and say it was this, 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 and this. How much was rent? How much was pet fees? How much was late fees? How much was insurance? How much was NSF fees? So, Give that total. Then put in there what you paid. And so I can't tell of this 409, how much is pet, how much is late. Absolutely. Uh, how much is insurance or NSF? So he's going to give us a further breakdown. Um, we will discuss this further next uh, Friday at 11 a.m. Miss Meg Bauer is here from Legal Aid. If you would like to talk with her privately, I can put you in what's called a breakout room. Do you wish um, to speak to her? I actually just had, I was just wondering if I could just add one more thing about the 409, uh, the, aside from what it is, uh, you know, a, like pet fee and uh, rent and yeah. all that stuff. I did communicate with them the past, it's been the past couple of weeks with short communication back on my end. I've been trying to get a hold of them. Um, I've had to look for my mom for help on this one to cover that balance because I've been short at work. They've been slow and I've been, been getting picked up and paying as much as I can right away. Um, she's offering to pay via credit card or debit card, but they're, they're basically saying she has to pay money order because of my NSF charge that one time. Uh, basically, so she's trying to take care of the whole thing right now, you know, today, tomorrow, just whenever as soon as possible, but we will have to send it through the mail. So I just want right, to- well, if, you. if you do just decide to pay the whole thing, 623.12, and you send it in yep. and they accept it, you don't even need to come back next Friday. Okay. Um, yeah, but if it's not resolved, come back and um, I'm not sure still about the number. So if you elect to just pay it, great. You'll start with a clean slate on November 1st. Um, you're not too far by. I have people this morning that are $5,000 behind in their rent. They're never going to get caught up. Uh, you seem to be pretty much on top of it. Yeah. So that's up to you. But there's Meg Bauer is still available if you wish to discuss it with her okay do you wish to do that or do you just plan to pay it um probably just 
plan to pay it. I, I don't necessarily agree with it as it could be, you know, the pet fees and all that stuff for an emotional support animal. But I, I do just want a clean slate. Like you said, yes, I just, I, I need a roof over my head and I would like a right. place to stay without worrying, you know? All right. Well, I will, if you pay it, you don't need to come. Okay. If you don't, I'll see you next Friday at 11 a.m. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Meg, I think they maybe could have benefited from talking with you, but uh, That's right. we had those Riverside cases that you did, and you were a great help. They had put those numbers on there, and they gave them one day notice that their rent was being increased substantially, and uh, once you got involved, they backed off and uh, realize that somebody had made a mistake. So for those tenants, it was very helpful to have your involvement in those cases. Good morning, Mr. Stafford, Mr. Witt. Good morning. morning. I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay. Here's Mr. Sutherland. Um, I actually have a really quick question. Do you think it's too late to uh, have like a little break off meeting with Jamie or not Jamie, um, Megan by chance? If it is, it's Megan's okay. not Megan's not here. She had to go to a uh, training. Okay. Okay. So it wouldn't be if she were here. Okay. But she left at ten. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. We return to the matter of Quail Run Apartments managed by South Shore Realty versus uh, Nicholas Stafford and Emily DeWitt, apartment B3 at this complex. We were here uh, last week and we determined there were a lot of issues here. I think we figured out that the arrearage was 409.29 and court costs were 213.83 for a total of 623.12. Um, and there were also support animal issues and other things regarding the fee for the dog animal and the cat. And um, anyway, Mr. Kevin Sutherland is here in his vast library of ancient books. And uh, he, I'm glad he's here because he has some background with this. Mr. Sutherland, what's the status as of today? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the court, when we appeared last week, uh, did request an updated ledger be provided to both the defendants and, and to the court. We did provide that ledger, which shows the breakdown of payments and charges. Again, plaintiff is here in a non-payment of rent case. Again, we're we're claiming that pet fees were properly assessed and charged, among other items, uh, under the terms and obligations of the lease, and that those amounts were unpaid for the reasons stated in the ledger. Um, I can address the emotional support animal issue. I, I I looked at some communication from defendant yesterday, uh, and it just seems that the court was pretty clear last week that, you know, when it came to questions about defendants' rights or their obligations to seek out legal counsel, and the communication I looked at yesterday doesn't appear that that, that happened. I mean, ultimately here, um, you know, there's a pet fee, which was agreed upon in the ledger, and the defendants are seeking a, a reasonable accommodation, which is essentially a fancy word for an exception to the rule that a pet fee should be charged. Um, but we're missing the required documentation required under Michigan rules and law uh, to be able to um, remove that category of animal pet to a designation of a some emotional support animal, which is, as the court is aware, is not deemed a pet. But even if we get into that, there are additional pets in the unit, which would also be required to be designated to get an exception. So I, I think, Your Honor, all roads as a matter of law today seem to be leading to the amount was properly assessed, at least as plaintiff is aware, pursuant to the ledger, and the payments have not been sufficient to cover rent plus those other monies due. Um, if it'll please the court, Your Honor, again, pursuant to the lease, there is a provision in the lease that 
talks about the application of payments when payments come in. Uh, and uh, and those are, you know, paid to other money due and other obligations and rent at, at sort of the last. So we do deem what's owed today as unpaid rent of $409.29. Um, but just for judicial purposes, we obviously discussed that it's the pet fees, it seems that we're not being covered. Um, and so going forward, if that's going to not be charged, then those emotional support animal documentations must be provided for the landlord to be able to make that exception to the lease obligations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned other pets. We learned of a cat last week. Is there anything more than just one dog and one cat? No, sir. There's a hamster and I think some other things, apparently. I don't know if that's true, but that's that's what I was told. Yeah, if, if I can speak real quick, uh, that was back in like March. Uh, I was watching for them when David was in charge. Uh, we had to get rid of every single one of them. They were pulling us up on that end, and we agreed. We, we did follow through and did what we needed to do. It took time. And so we, the hamsters are gone? Every, yeah, everything everything there has been gone. And since then, we've got a dog for Emily's support and safety um, and the cat for indoor support, you know, um, as there's kind of bad company around here. And, and well, people will call something a support animal just because they want to have a pet. Yeah, uh, sure. People want a pit bull as their emotional support animal. But there's you can't just call it an emotional support animal. There's certain documentation that has to accompany it, and they have to determine that it is, and you know, people want to have a pot-bellied pig or a, a toy donkey or other things. People try to claim a emotional support chicken, but mostly it's dogs. But anyway, they allege that it wasn't done properly. You're not too far on your rent, but this has to do, and so this fee is going to continue to accrue. For one thing, you want a pet in a violation, in, in exception to the no pet rule. And you claim that it's an emotional support pet, so it should be allowed. And then you're claiming because it is an emotional support fee, um, pet animal, I shouldn't have to pay the fee that other people have to pay if they have a pet, but it isn't an emotional support pet. So people are claiming it's an emotional support pet, one, because they want to have one, and two, they don't want to pay the fee. Um, but you haven't provided the documentation to establish that it is an emotional support animal. So fortunately, it's not too far behind. But the same thing is going to come up next month in November unless you get it certified as a support animal. One, they could move to terminate your tenancy because it violates the lease. And two, they'll continue to assess the pet fee unless it's determined to be an emotional support animal. Okay. Um, I. Uh, I do have a question. To my understanding, I thought all, and the law's understanding, I was under the impression that all you needed to uh, provide is that uh, reasonable accommodation form, which we have provided a few times. And I do have documentation and emails and screenshots. I have everything saying and putting forth my effort that I did try to give them my documentation. For, for, for both animals? Yes, I had to, I had one in June and then July we got the, the dog um, and I had it updated, or Emily had it updated. So we had to give them a new form, obviously, because we have the dog living here. Um, and after that, uh, all I was asked was to fill out a pet screening profile on a website, which I don't believe is in my lease that I need to do that. Uh, it's also asking for quite a bit of information that I don't feel is also, you know, within my rights or within their rights to ask me for just because it's, you know, I think all I need is just the documentation just to show them that it's no, really you're like I said, your honor, can I address that? Yeah, go ahead. I appreciate the court's time because obviously I think all of us are trying to resolve this in a way that we can all move forward and not have to come back on this issue. <laughs> Excuse me. To request the the exception to the to the pet to the pet fee, you know, obviously the reasonable accommodation has to be in writing and it has to um, you know, say I I need to keep my emotional support animal. You have to specify that you have a disability and include how your emotional support animal will essentially ameliorate your symptoms of your disability and permit you to use and enjoy your home. And that's only the first three things. You also have to show that you have a doctor's letter or a documentation under the rules of evidence in a, in a case that's on point in Michigan. We have to essentially verify the disability uh, under MRE 702 rules to have someone who is, you know, an expert, as we would call them, to verify the disability and that the support animal as an ESA is necessary, again, for the use and enjoyment of the home. So there's like a two-pronged test that should appear in a treatment 
physician or counselor letter, uh, that documentation goes with what the uh, plan had provided to you, which was all the other details you can do through their portal. Uh, so, so those things are all designed to get this resolved. And I would just encourage defendant uh, to do those things because that is what uh, typically we look for. Well, and then there's also a pet profile. They want to know what it is. Um, is it a chihuahua or is it a pit bull? Um, and uh, is it neutered? Is it not neutered? Um, is it had shots? Uh, so, Mr. DeWitt, you kind of got, or Stafford, you got started in the process, but you didn't get all the way there. And as I said, you can't just unilaterally decide that it's an emotional support animal. There's more to it. You need a doctor to say that you need an emotional support animal. Absolutely. So I find that the plaintiff has established that $409.29 is due through October. Absolutely. But as I indicate, this pet fee is going to continue to accrue unless you get over the hump on those other items, or they could actually move to terminate your tenancy. I don't know if a hamster qualifies as a pet, but apparently it did, and you got rid of it. You also owe $213.83 in court costs. That's the filing fee, service fee, and uh, attorney fee. The total is $632.12 due by November 6th. Okay. Um, can I bring up something about uh, that? Uh, yes. With the documentation, I, on my end, I have provided it. And like, to my rights, I, I know that that's... I mean, in, in my edge, uh, really all I needed to do, the pet screening, I, I respect that and I have no problem with that. And I'm willing to put in all the information. It's just the medical documents that, and the medical information being released is kind of iffy because the document uh, for the reasonable accommodation has all that on there. And it's already been sent over to them. It's signed by the doctor and has the phone number. Anything. Right, so it explains why, how I have anxiety and everything. Well, who, who, who signed it? Uh, and Davenheiser from Paws who, Clinic. From Paws Clinic? Yes, in Three Rivers. And that's is that a vet veterinarian? Oh, it is a doctor's office in Three Rivers. Oh. And that's why we haven't paid it. We have money in hand willing to pay it. We just feel okay. back up our rights on that part. And we're trying to exhaust, you know, everything to, to try to show All our right, well, All right. So you com you contend you have provided that information with the doctor's info. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Sutherland says they don't have that. So let's see what he can determine. I have not seen that that particular document in my file, and that certainly would be something I would want to look at. Um, is is Jamie from Short South uh, is with me today? Uh, so if she has received a copy of that, that would be helpful. Jamie, are you are you listening? I am. Um, so the the form that they're referring to needs to be submitted with the pet profile to the third party company. It is not something that we manage. We actually manage that through a third party agency who does that all by the state and governed laws. Um, so that is where they are supposed to submit that form. They can submit it to us all that they want. That's not how we manage it. That's not how it's recorded. And that's not how it's kept mm -hmm. for documentation purposes. It all has to be through the pet profile, which I have sent them and they are aware of. So we make the determination through a third party company to make sure that everyone's rights are being you know, evaluated equally. And so if I took everybody's cat form and didn't do it this way, we would end up in a in a situation. So we pay a third party company to monitor this information for us. And that is where it needs to be submitted, which we have explained to the defendant. And just so just so I understand the court's clear, they have not submitted that yet to that company. That's the, the link you said. They have them. not. Com that's correct. They have not completed the pet profile to submit the documents. Okay. But once they do that, then um, how long does it take for that to be resolved so that they can, you know, get a decision made? It's very quickly. So I think that they have like a three day turnaround time to get back with the tenants to let them know that the animal does meet the state law and requirements for uh, the accommodation. And then we would move forward to adjust their ledger as such once that was completed. Thank you. Your Honor, any other All questions? Right. Sounds like you're, they're, they're going to be able to do it. They just haven't dotted the correct I and crossed the correct T. All right, I'll go with my ruling. You've got the money to pay it. November's rent is going to be due on November 1st, but I would get on that sooner rather than later. If you have a legitimate need for a support animal, I don't have any objection to that as long as it's not a dangerous animal. 
and neither do they, but they've got a certain procedure that you have to go through. Okay. So I will send you a copy of that. You have until November 6th to pay that amount plus November's rent, but all I right, have, good luck. To I do have a question. Okay. This. So if, all right. if it's kind of done to my lease and all it speaks about in the lease is just paying the pet fees as long as you, know, you don't have the reasonable accommodation, uh, I've submitted that to John and David when David was in charge and it was perfectly fine with them until Jamie came in charge and a few issues arise and this and that. And now all of a sudden we have to fill that out. I, that's the only reason I haven't done it again, is just because I, well, you know, for my right. well, my advice is go ahead and do it and then you'll be in compliance and then you can keep your pet. Yeah. All right. Best of luck to you both. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sutherland, if you stick around for just a minute. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Um,